In this video we'll be looking at how to install and use LabChart Reader, particularly for those of you working along at home. Now unfortunately due to COVID you won't have access to the equipment that you need in order to run these experiments and so we've run the heart tissue through each of the experiments and have provided these data files for you so you can still perform the rest of the experimental work for this practical. Now these data files are exactly the same data files that you would have captured had you been in the class performing the experiments and so you should just continue on as though you had captured these files and perform all the analyses that you would have otherwise performed. To do that you're going to need some way of opening up these files. The software that we capture the data with is called LabChart and fortunately there's a reader software, LabChart Reader, which can be used to open up these files and do all the analyses that you need to do. To find that software just go to Google and type in LabChart Reader. And then you should see a link that looks something like this and for me it's the first result from Google. And so I click on that and it takes me to a web page on the AD Instruments website. And AD Instruments is just a company who makes the software and they also make the power labs and various other pieces of equipment that we use. Uh, this page here tells you about LabChart Reader. To actually get the download, just go up here into the top right hand corner and there's a version for Windows and Mac. I've got a Windows computer so I'm just going to click on this link here. And this is the page where you download the software. Just click on this button and the installer will download and then just install that on your computer. I've already got it on my computer so I won't download it again. Once you've got the software installed you should be able to open each of the example data files and there should be one for each of the experiments that you'll need to perform for your lab report. Your notes for this class will describe what you need to look at and what analysis you need to perform for each of the data sets. So you'll still need to perform all the data analysis and describe all your findings and answer all the questions and write up the report of course. And so the only bit that we've done is perform the parts that need the specialist equipment since you didn't have access to that. Now I'm just going to open up that first file so that we can talk about a couple of things and I'll show you a couple of points and tips and tricks for using the software. So first of all you can increase or decrease the size of the traces by clicking on the controls down here in the bottom. or by clicking on the auto scale button up at the top here. You can also move the trace by moving your cursor to the Y axis and then when the cursor changes to a half arrow you can stretch the trace up and down in the vertical axis. And that's useful because you can change the level of zoom in smaller increments than you can if you were to press the, the plus and the minus buttons down below. When the cursor changes to a double headed arrow you can then slide the whole trace up and down. Now just as a reminder for those of you who haven't used LabChart before, when you want to measure something you'll need to use the marker. And to do that you'll grab the marker from the lower left corner of the screen and then drag it to the trace. And you then use the mouse over the part of the trace that you want to measure and then your reading will be in the top right hand corner. You can see force which is the Y axis reading on the bottom of these two numbers up here. But the X axis reading time is also shown and that's shown just above that number here. And so when you use the marker you're measuring from the marker to the cursor. If you don't use the marker then you'll be measuring from zero to the cursor and that's not necessarily what you're trying to measure. So you can see on this trace for example the baseline or the lowest point of that recording doesn't start at zero. So if we just used our cursor we're going to measure from say the peak of that curve down to zero. But you can see that the baseline is actually a bit lower than that. So we want to use the marker so that we're measuring right from the bottom all the way up to the top. So what's the maximum amplitude of that particular curve. So the point being whenever you're making a measurement in these recordings you should always use the marker. If you ever can't find the marker, so if it's not down in its lower left hand corner box or you can't see it on the screen anywhere, just double click on the box where it should be and it will reappear down in that lower left hand corner. Alright so now we'll have a look at how to change the information that's being displayed on the screen. So when you're looking at the data the trace from the highlighted page shown over here in the left hand column is shown in red and so that's the active page. When the overlay box at the top of that menu is checked then we'll display the number of pages that we've got selected using that slider. 
And so here we've got five pages selected. And so we're displaying five pages, including the active page. And so you can see that we've currently got page 20 selected. And so another four pages, pages 19, 18, 17, and 16, are also being displayed in blue along with the red active page. You can increase the number of pages being shown in the overlay by moving this slider up the top. And the green brackets in the menu will show you which pages are included in that overlay. If you don't want any overlays shown and you just want the selected page to be shown, then just uncheck the overlay box. And now only the active page will be displayed. All right, now another thing, the way we've been showing overlays to this point is that when we've got overlay selected, it's the adjacent pages which are shown in the overlay. Now if you want to compare two pages that are not adjacent to each other but not have anything else showing, then you can do it this way. First of all, make sure the overlay checkbox is checked, but then turn down the number of overlay pages to zero. And so now we should just be displaying the active page. To display another page in overlay, just press Ctrl on your keyboard and then click any of the other pages. And now that page will also be displayed as an overlay. And so choosing your overlays that way means you can overlay pages that aren't necessarily next to each other, as shown here. All right, so now just one more trick for working with these data files. I've labeled all the pages on the data files as we recorded them in the left hand column with information about what's going on during the experiment. So ordinarily when you look at all these curves, they're just all these blue curves and you, you've got no way at all of telling what's been going on during that particular recording. So you need these labels in order to tell where the drug treatments are going on, where frequencies changed and all that sort of stuff. So I've put those labels in here. Now sometimes the labels are a bit long for the display area. I haven't been able to find a way of increasing the width of that display area. And so sometimes the labels get chopped off. To read those labels then, if you right click on one of the labels, then select rename, a window shows up which lets you type in the new name for that page. But we can use it in order to just scroll along and read what the rest of that name is. So if you're having trouble reading some names that are cut off, then just use that rename trick in order to be able to see what the rest of that label says. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope that's helped you navigate your way around this lab chart reader for use with these example data files.